This is Sam, everyone. He's helping me with the lift. Oh, <laughs> Right, so delivery driver's just been and delivered me spin round. How do I do that again? I don't know how to spin round. He's just delivered me this lot from All Pond Solutions. You're wondering what it is, it's well you're not wondering what it is probably because you've sent the thumbnail for the video, but yeah. But what I need to do now is wait for my friend to finish work so that he can help me put it all in. Behold! Okay, so it says it's about 83 kilograms. Probably could lift it myself, but I'm not gonna. I've got a friend coming to help me. I did ask my mum, but that's, yeah. Yeah, it's not happening. This is Sam, everyone. He's helping me with the lift. Oh, you idiot. <laughs> You want to come too? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Right, right. Say hello to everyone. Yeah. There you go. Look. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> right. So this tank has now been sat here. Whoa. Yeah, it's massive, isn't it? Yeah, you can do that. It's so big. It's been sat here for a couple of weeks now, though, hasn't it? And quite frankly, I've just been desperate to get on and build it, but. I didn't have all the plants which are waiting to arrive from Tropica and now they are here. So without further ado, let's crack on. First thing I want to do is, oh bless you, oh bless you, you sneezing? Oh bless you. What's these? Oh that's mosses, all the different mosses that's going to go on top of the rocks that sit on there. On these rocks? No, that's different, that's shrimp tank. Anyway, so, yeah, what I want to do is, if you notice that this this light here is attached to the rim. Is that I, the same? Yeah, that side as well, and I just don't think that looks very good. So what I'm going to do is attach it to the roof and have it hang in. So that's the first job. Okay, there we have it. That's suspended really nicely, just with a little bit of fishing line and a screw. <laughs> I was gonna like video me doing it, but I thought, well, it's, it's fishing line and screw it. It doesn't really get much easier than that. But I'll get this wood out now. And then the next job is substrate, as we always, as we always know, as we always know. What does that even mean? I'm a bit undecided still, but I think the best way is gonna to be to put a layer of gravel down. Um, and then I can put the more large flat rocks on top of that to create more of a sort of a load spreading area, if you like, because I don't want to put pressure points on the glass. I mean, it's really thick glass, so it'd probably be all right either way, but um, yeah, we'll just do it like that. I think that's the best way. And then I'll put smaller rocks at the front of, of the larger ones to make sure that none of the gravel gets turned up uh, in case Pancho tries to eat it, which to be honest, I don't think really happens. I think that's just an internet thing. Here are all our rocks for the hardscape selection. Is it heavy doodles? It's a moth. Are you picking up a moth? No, it's just a bit of leaf. <laughs> Let's see. But yeah, lots to choose from, lots, yeah, lots of selection. Two... Look at the size of that one, boys. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I'm going to need all of them, but you know, it's good to have a good choice. Yeah. <laughs> What I've done, because I, I wasn't going to do this, but I am anyway, because I just I want to be real careful, because we're put, putting a lot of weight stacked up here. So I've put down this polystyrene all the way across and beneath the gravel as well. So it'll just spread the load nicely of all these heavy rocks that are going to be stacked on top of it. it was something in the air. Right, first layers in. 
it's basically a wall of rock initially at the bottom just to give it base sort of level this side actually comes out a lot further than than the left side although you can't really see it there let me move it well not a lot more but you know there you go a bit of an overhang and we on the next layer we'll indent a little bit more and give it a little bit more variety and height and whatnot but that's just the first layer nice and flat down <laughs> It's turning out to be more epic than I thought. That's quite a uh, quite an intense sort of <laughs> hard scape there. It's quite hard to get a sense of scale, scale actually. So let me get in front of it. Don't know if that helps, but <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's going well. Uh, the next big job is to uh, block all these little holes that you see everywhere. It's going to take some time, but it'll be worth it. So the panjo doesn't get stuck behind. I don't want to go in behind at all, I want it all to be just in the foreground. Obviously it's only going to be uh, halfway filled with water as well, as, as you saw before with my previous aquatorium. Well, off camera last night, I was just playing around with some wood. Uh, that's not a euphemism. <laughs> uh, I just, and yeah, it looks good. Uh, I was going to take it out and refilm putting it in, but the likelihood is I'll get it wrong. And <laughs> um, that looks good. I've got some more smaller, finer woods to go in between as well. Now, I need to carry on as I said before and block those gaps. We've been driving around, singing songs way too loud because we wanna. Picking up a love friends for love. Well, I think I've done a good job there of blocking up as much as is necessary, but time will tell. When Pancho's in the tank, I'm sure he or she will find lots of little gaps that are all open that I need to block, but that's fine. It, it's a continuous work in progress, as with any tank, really. And here is how the filtration will work. I've removed one of the big rocks that goes here just to show you, but the section behind is completely clear. And then you've got your intake pipe right there. Uh, the out, the outlet for the water flow, well, I'm gonna modify the outlet of the canister filter and have tubes that run all the way across with holes in them at different areas, and then they'll trickle all the water down on the top section. And that should work a treat. Well, I think this is looking great. So next job, I need to get the sand in at the bottom. Um, I'm not gonna wash it. I'm then gonna fill it with water, drain it out. It's gonna get really cloudy and horrible, but that's absolutely fine. I've got a big filter to sort that out and I'll put lots of filter floss in. We're going to be good. Okay, wow, look at that. That looks great. I can't wait to get planting. Um, it's slightly not quite as as light at the front here as it is on the top that's deliberate the um you know all the immersed plants and the uh, ferns i'm going to have they'll need more light than the, what i've got planting underneath plus i just think it looks more natural when it's not super bright it's better for the fish it'll be better for the axolotl as well so pancho's gonna love it a bit more about filtration the filter is going in underneath the water box aquarium tank and then it runs over to the top here where i've got inlet this will be the outlet. I'll have this on the end as well, like this. But I'm going to first attach this small piece onto this pipe like that with some um, glue. Well, not glue. Uh, it's like a plastic gun, so it like seals it completely on. Then this pipe will run the length out of sight with holes perforated in it where I need it to be. So hopefully that works well. Okay, there's the pipe working. Huggle it moment, but you won't see any of it. Curls back around the back there and at the top. Uh, next, I need to perforate it with the holes of where I want the water to come out, which is around this section here, which will flow down so I don't need to worry about the bottom section. And I just want some more coming up the top here over this rock so we can put lots of nice mosses on it. It should look really good. The pipe works in, the filter's primed, 
Let's test this out. Hopefully it works. Okay, flow's a bit strong. Let me turn that down. Well, I think I'm pleased to say that that is working. And once I've put something here, like moss wise, in fact, I'll do it now to show you. Bit of moss on there, look. And all of a sudden, you've got no spitting. Ideal, that looks really good. I like this side. Ah, oh, look at that, it's just what we need. You don't need more than that, because uh, the water travels through mosses. So as long as you're getting the top part of the moss wet, it tends to flow. All, it'll flow all the way down into any moss that I've got down the bottom there as well. So, yes, worked. <laughs> right, as you've seen previously, I've got some really nice mosses here, look. Uh, the ones that are collected by the road with their own sort of... That's fully clean, by the way. Clean... Uh, substrate to them so you can put them on rocks they were growing on the side of the road so on rock well tarmac but still don't want to put it directly in the water flow but just to the edge so it can take on water but not stop the flow that's all the moss added in the areas i want for now I can always add more later if I want to, but for the minute I'm gonna leave it as that so I can add in some nice ferns and get some of the plants from Tropica in. Some of them I wanna grow immersed, you see. Uh, right at the back there, in that section now, I want a load of immersed plants coming up through. The materials that you're gonna to need to make the packets for the ferns to go in so that they don't spill all their organic material into the water column is aqua soil, Tropica obviously, <laughs> elastic band, your ferns, over this side, a bit of sand to add as acts as a substrate as well with the uh, Tropica soil and filter floss. And of course, my plant food, just a little bit in each packet. Anyway, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, that's really coming together now. So I'll put it right by that rock there, just behind it because it's receiving water from the waterfall there, but it's not directly in the water, so it's not gonna just continue to leach organics. That's what you just need to do. Just be aware that you don't wanna plonk the uh, terrestrial ferns directly in water. Eventually the roots will grow through that packet we made and go into the water themselves, but at the moment, just leave them so that they're receiving water, but they're not in the water. at my usual spot collecting terrestrial mosses so like you just look around you just find them on the rocks this one's a nice one peel it up so you get a little bit of substrate of it as well underneath it's mainly sand it's all quite dry which means it's going to survive really well there you go look just this one's a bit too dry actually a bit too fine that's a nice nice bit and just keep doing that
we've got a really good horde there. Look at that green. Why do I just love moss? I don't know why, it's love moss. It's just holding up to it, I love it. Anyway, let's get it in. the terrestrial plants taken care of and now right in this section in here I want to put a load of aquatic plants that can grow immersed fortunately when you receive them they've already been grown immersed so they're already in the right state I just need to top up in that area with some Tropica aqua soil and then I can plant some um, what have I got I've got Hygrophila Cyamensis 53b everyone loves 53b grows really nice when it's immersed as well the Amazon sword Bella Hooray I think that's how you pronounce it at least I'm trying and hygrophila polysperma as well. So the plants come in this nice little blister pack. What you do, peel them off, take out the pot, Remove from the pot. Oh, this is going lovely. Peel off, drop, <laughs> peel off, drop. Actually, that one's perfect. Like it's not always just move that because sometimes the roots are growing in really a lot more into the rock wall. But that's beautiful. Well, I can plant that now. Right, so that's that little immersed section there completed. I now want to start planting into the sand. Um, obviously there's no nutrients in just sand. Eventually there will be from the waste of the axolot oil and from the fish. That, that will actually give weight, uh, food to the plants. In the meantime, I'm going to plant all the plants in the sand. And then I'm going to use these nutrition capsules from Tropica, which are brilliant because they're a little tablet and they'll stay together in one area, which is just what I want. I don't want it spreading around underneath the substrate because I know this substrate is going to get disturbed as the axolotl grows. In the meantime, it's going to stay where it is and the root system of all the plants will get intact and it'll be absolutely fine by the time the axolotl is older.
Okay, the time has come to remove little Pancho from his temporary home and put him into his new home. And this, I hope he likes it. I'm, I'm sure he will. I keep saying he, I'm guessing it's a he. I'm just gonna go with he. Come on, mate. Oh bless him, look, he looks absolutely lost in there. He's only tiny, but he's gonna grow, remember, so you'll probably get about this long, possibly there. So I think this is a really good size aquarium for him. Thank you. 